Yo, salute, 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 salute. Yo, 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 salute, salute, salute. I know this is an impromptu live event, man. Uh, I had the day off. Finally took a day off from work, man. Want to do a nice little live real quick, man. Go over an article from The Athletic. So for anybody that comes through, man, I appreciate you. I'm not expecting anybody to be in this video right now, man. No, I'm not expecting anybody to be checking this out right now. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate anybody who comes through. Uh, to talk about this, man. But yeah, we're here tonight, man. Just talk about a few things with Tom Thibodeau. Talk about the Knicks in general. Denver Nuggets game. Um, but yeah, yesterday, guys, I could not do the stream yesterday. Again, I apologize. Uh, an event that I, that a Rock Marciano concert that was supposed to happen, I think it was late last year, got rescheduled to this Thursday. So again, March has been the worst month in terms of I have don't I don't have time for nothing, can't do anything. Everything's been jarbled like this. So, again, I apologize, guys. But yesterday, concert happened. Uh, and I couldn't get out. I'm not going to get out of it. Uh, this is a guy, Rock Marciano, my, probably my favorite rapper right now. Have not been able to see this guy for for, for a while. And they, they rescheduled concert. Now, if it was me buying tickets late, it spurred a moment, and I knew I had this game, that's one thing. This was rescheduled. I had no control of it. I was like, look, let me get this out the way. Let me see my, my, my guy, the guy, Rock Marciano. You know what I'm saying, man? And just just to show y'all a little bit, man, because y'all don't y'all don't believe me, man. And why is it not I had to, man. Y'all, y'all don't know about that, man. Y'all too, y'all too young for that, man. But yeah, I had to go to the Rock Marciano, uh, Rock Marciano concert, man. Had to see the guy, Rock Marciano. By the way, please, guys, hit the like, subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit the notification, basically, each notification, each video. Blah, 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 blah. Also, please go check out Nick's Morning Brew, man. My guy Hector, Jiggle Porto, Phil Porto wasn't there, but also uh, 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 Eddie Pressy was there, man. Had some nice, had a nice conversation on the Knicks, man. Funny dudes, man. I guess they also, we also be talking about the Mets sometime soon, man. Eddie talking trash about my guy David Wright, man. Eddie, watch your mouth for my guy David Wright. You don't, you don't talk trash about David Wright. I don't care about the Roy's, which I've heard about. I don't care about that. I don't care about my guy David Wright. You know what I'm saying? Losing all that weight and uh, getting the spinal stenosis. Mm. Dude, we don't talk about we don't talk about David Wright like that. Chill out. You doing you doing too much. Leave my son David Wright alone, man. But no, it was a great it was a great conversation this morning. So please go check them out. Nick's Morning Brew um, on YouTube, man. They're doing some big things, man. Uh, so please go check them out. I believe they were on SNY recently too. Uh, but yeah, man. Let's talk about Nick. So before we get into Tom Thibodeau stuff, man. Yesterday, man. I don't. It wasn't even a bad loss. Wasn't that crazy of a bad loss? I I know people look. The Knicks are three and one so far in the so called road trip. Uh, three and, golly, I'm blind. Three and, uh, uh, one on the West Coast trip, let me say. We still have the Nets tomorrow, which is, counts as a road trip. We, no, no. Do we play them at home? I think we play them at home. Am I bugging out? I think we play the Brooklyn Nets at home. Am I bugging out? Yeah, we play the Brooklyn Nets at home, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, so that'd be the end of the road trip. My bad. I thought we had one more in Brooklyn. I know we have another game against the Nets. I think both games were in Brooklyn. But anyway, it don't matter. Knicks, Denver Nuggets yesterday. You know, look, the Knicks took a loss yesterday. They were mostly in the game until that, that one Jokic shot where he had that ugly and one shot that bounced like a Plinko into the damn basket. But overall, look, it, was, it wasn't the greatest of games from guys like Brunson, Tom Thibodeau try to go small against the uh, Denver Nuggets. Didn't work. Um... And again, with guys being out, it is what it is. Didn't have no OG and Anubi. I know we molly whopped them last time at 30. One thing that was interesting to see, I don't know if it was more so Mike Malone or Tom Thibodeau, but I think it was more so Mike Malone. If you watch that game with Jokic, now maybe I got to go back and watch compared to the last game. I didn't see I didn't see us really attack Jokic once he was in the post a lot. 
Like, we didn't really throw them doubles at him as aggressively as we did in the first game whenever he picked up his dribble. And I think that part of it was the fact that, obviously, without, with, guys, with guys missing, I don't, know, I don't know if Tom Thibodeau wanted to bet on us being killed. They, they beat us with a few outlet passes. Um, they pushed the tempo against us. Every time we missed a shot, they were just pushing the ball up, up the court. Obviously, not having OJ Anubi there allowed freaking MPJ to put up 30 against us. I think Jokic had 30. I think he had a triple-double double, triple double as well, too. Tough game. I mean, it's not even tough. I mean, they. I felt like the Nuggets were more like this team would not die. I didn't feel... I still felt the Nuggets were going to win that game. I don't think we had really the legs to run against Jokic's passing and MPJ and Gordon be able to beat us out there. KCP did a decent enough job on uh, on uh, uh, Jalen Brunson. Um, and Jalen Brunson still had still shot 47% from the field, but he, you know, shot poorly from outside, 2 for 7 from 3. Um, to me, I didn't really feel like that was a game where the sky's falling. I thought it was a nice litmus test, if anything, against our depth. Uh, your man, uh, Alec Burks, with his Alec Burks self, you know, weird game because you felt like he was just, he was ish in a bed at times. He did have 18 points, 4 for 8 from outside. Um, but that is, it, look, it, it, was, it was a nice litmus test against our depth. Um, goes to show you how well our depth, depth can play even in situations where we're playing against just teams who are just superior against us, just given a context of our team. So uh, didn't have didn't have many qualms about the game. I will say this though, Isaiah Harnstein is coming back. Twenty points yesterday, eight rebounds. He's starting to get back into that double digit range for rebounds. But able, he's it looks like he's getting a lot more healthier than he was with Achilles. By the way, for the people trying to kill Tom Thibodeau, your man Isaiah Harnstein has had Achilles issues, as I mentioned in another video since 2019. So stop with all the Tom Thibodeau's running to the ground. He's also an unrestricted free agent, so he's trying to get his damn money. Eh. But all in all, man, you know, is what it is type of game against the Nuggets. The Knicks did better than expected on this road trip against the freaking, the, the Warriors, where Tom Thibodeau showed he could play small, played that to wonderful effect against um, the Warriors. By the way, the guy that we drafted a truck to play small and Obi Toppin, I mean, let me chill it. At that, at that, at that. Um, played well against the, 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 uh, uh, um, Against the Sacramento Kings, they couldn't shoot for a lick in the first half against this last game. Uh, he said, let me see what buzzer beater says. Super in the chat, by the way, man. Pierce, Pierre Moise, salute, man. Kerry Cox, Captain Matumbo. Yeah, he was in a, he was in a Knicks brew. Knicks brew, excuse me. He was in the <laughs> Knicks brew. Morning brew. Knicks morning brew chat earlier today, man. Salute, salute. MH in the build as well, too. JJ was there as well, too. Buzzer beater says, salute to buzzer beater says, when you played Denver in New York, they were all, they were at the end of an East Coast trip. They blew them out this time. And then at the end of the West Coast trip, and that they they beat us. All right, and I feel like we're still in that game. I feel like when we beat, I mean, did did Yoga staff thirty that game? The first game we played them, I think I want to say at thirty or twenty something. But just how we were able to kind of stifle everybody else and stop Yoga from really getting into a groove and set his other players up. I think Mike Malone took uh, notice of that. And every time you saw Yo, not every time. I take that back. A lot of times you saw Yoga, she's typically at the top of the key or right inside. Uh, the top of the key um, where he's facilitating and passing. and It just seems like the Knicks, like, they made sure, all right, if Jokic's got to have a better vantage point so he's not in some weird post position right near the wing and then somebody comes over and steals the ball. Even though Jokic still make that pass, but it looks as if, like, Mike Malone was like, right, I'm not letting these guys do that whole rushes, uh, shot clocks going down or when, or when Jokic gathers, or not gathers, but is ready to put the ball on the ground and get into his move. Like, they, 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 they move the ball a lot quickly. A lot more quickly in this game against us. So, salute to Mike Malone for adjusting to us. Um, but, yeah, that was yeah, that was an interesting game. But, again, on the West Coast trip, beat the Blazers. Who am I? Is there another team? Beat the the the, uh, the Sacramento Kings, who still, at, at the time, were the seventh in terms of offensive, offense, offensive efficiency, uh, offensive, excuse me, rating. One of the better offensive teams out there, a team that has molly whopped us in the past or beat us in the past, let me say. Uh, they couldn't even, The first half, they couldn't shoot worth a lick. Um, the whole trying to use De'Aaron Fox as dribble drive penetrated at the end of the game really was ineffective just because they didn't, they didn't have... Bro, the Knicks played so well that game on offense and on defense. Bro, like, give it to Tom Thibodeau. We can talk about it a little bit, but Tom Thibodeau deserves his flowers, man. Suit to Allah Wise in the building. Uh, Buzzer Beater says Chewy was holding Jokic and he could not score. Tibbs took Chewy off him and Jokic went off. And that's why, look, I mean, they tried. we tried to go small yesterday, which wasn't smart because they have... Some sizable players, Pauls, Aaron Gordon, MPJ, Jokic, obviously. But that's just a team that 
they have functional size. That's why I got scared. Now, Nuggets are a better three-point shooting team than this team, the Magic. But that's why I did not really want to play the Magic like that because they have sizable, uh, they have functional big men who can run the floor, who can shoot, who can attack off the dribble. When you play small against a team like that, if you don't have guys who are making who are knockdown shooters now yesterday we shot we shot fine 48 percent from the field 35 percent from three but if you don't got knockdown shooters that you're shooting 40 some percent from three 52 percent 53 percent from the field it's tough to play against those type of teams where you have functional size in the front court and the back court it's just a tough match a porter was a different yeah he could have missed mike porter jr went off bro mike porter jr had um I need some water. Mike Porter Jr. Uh, had 30 points, shot 81% for the field, 13 for 16, ridiculous, 3 for 6 from 3, 8 rebounds. Just absolutely killed us. And he goes off on that. He has those type of games. Um, so it is. I'm not, I'm not even like, I'm not even, I'm not crazy angry about yesterday's games. But I did want to look up uh, the matchup stats for yesterday. Take a look at my tribe and see what I see. So yeah, in yesterday's game, your man, Michael Porter Jr., had, uh, damn, I wish I could show this to you guys, but it'd probably be a hassle. Uh, so just looking at the matchups, the offensive play, it was Michael Porter Jr. All right. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., so against Pressure Chua, he had two points. Wow, I'm blind. Two points. Uh, the guy I really killed was Dante DiVincenzo. Absolutely murdered Dante DiVincenzo. He had 18 points against Dante. Had... Fairly pedestrian shot, strat, strats, stats against everybody else. 4 for 12 against Miles McBride. Sorry, whoa, 4 for 12, excuse me. He had 4 points, 2 for 3 against Miles McBride. He was 8 for 8 versus Dante DiVincenzo. Golly. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic, 1 for 1. 1 for 1 versus Pressure True. So again, it's it's it, going small hurt us. And then not having OJ Anubi. OJ Anubi shuts, I don't say shut him down, but OJ Anubi does not allow Pressure True to go 8 for 8 from the field, bro. Not even close. Not even close. Right? He also, you know, two for two from three. Nah, bro. He ain't, bro. You man, MPJ ain't doing that against OJ Anubi. So it's tough. Like, I, and I don't want to make excuses because I'm sitting up here talking about Tom Thibodeau be able to. Uh, uh, but the OJ played against the Warriors, I believe. Yeah, I can't even use that. But it's, it's, it's a, it was a tough game, bro. It's a tough game. The Knicks were in there down by, what was it, four or five? Four or five when Jokic made that N one. Shot that basically ended the game for us. So, yeah, I'm not too plus on it. We have we come back home to the Nets. Uh, I would like Mitchell Robinson to start seeing him minutes hopefully soon. I know he's just had the contact practices. It, it'll be nice for him to get some minutes against uh, some of these sizable front courts. I'll be playing. We'll be playing against the Nets, the Pistons with Jalen Durant. We'll be playing against uh, OKC uh, with uh, Chet Holmgren. Uh, next schedule. Against uh, Chet Holmgren. Why can't this thing pop up? We're playing against the Heat, against Bam Adebayo. Uh, that'll be right at the beginning of April. They said he'll be back before the end of March. He also got the Spurs coming up with one by Yama. So just to get his feet wet, we understand Isaiah Harnstein is going to be the guy be taking most of the minutes or a lot of minutes as Mitch Robinson gets healthy. Even though I said this before, I would like to see Isaiah Harnstein utilize more with the non-Brunson unit. So however they stagger the lineups, but obviously Tom Thibodeau picks, you know, fourth quarters based on how, you know, guys are performing. Unless it's Julius Randle. Um, I'm just joking before Ace comes in here and tries to kill me. But I would like to see Mitch Robinson get some burn against these front courts. Again, you need about like 10 games to get some type of rhythm, right? Going into the playoffs. Uh, so it'd be nice to see him get some more minutes. Suit to King Ember in the building. JJ says, next four are light. Got to go three and one minimum. I agree with you. Right now, we're in, fifth, in the fifth spot. Right now, right with the Magic right above us. So it's going to be us versus Magic, I think, for the most part. Even though... Even though the Knicks slip to the six and you end up playing Cleveland, is it the worst of things? <laughs> is it the worst? Is it the worst? So, uh, you know, and Cleveland to me, I don't care what no one says. Cleveland is food, man. I don't care about no Jared Allen. I don't care about no freaking uh, Evan Mobley who got no, all, his his offensive skill. And even I'm seeing some get his confidence be shot. So that's what I'm saying, man. They need Donovan Mitchell to play hero ball and save their asses. If they, like, like, uh, 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 what's that dude's name? Rest in peace. The coach used to be at the Vikings and he went to the Cardinals. He said, You want to crown their ass? Crown their ass. Um, not Derek Eric's. Um, damn, he passed away too, man. Damn, rest in peace. Former coach. He's this coach, a big dude, kind of big fat dude. Uh, De Dennis. Damn, 
I'm forgetting his name, man. Dennis Crown. Yeah, Dennis Green. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dennis Green, yes. Damn, son. So you want to crown the asses? Crown the asses. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, Y'all got moderators, but can't spell resigned. Right? That's spell resigned wrong? Oh, because I put resigned. Oh, crap. You're right. Well, the moderators don't do that. was me. Uh, but thanks for trying to insult me, though. But thank you. I appreciate you for pointing that out. Let me change that. I said resigned. <laughs> it's going to be resigned. It actually sounds the opposite. Resigns means retired. And I can't even change resigned to that. So I apologize for that back to it, though. Uh, yeah, so it's changed out. But thank you. Thank you for trying to embarrass me. Doesn't mean absolute jack-ish to me. Uh... And see Lumpy Rex. These are the type of guys that come in. He never, he never supposed to channel, but now he's coming into the soul. But anyway, God bless you. Six is better now. Four, five, six. You get cabs most likely, and a voice say, "Yo, hey, oh, bro, that's what I'm saying." I said, "The the three to the the, the 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 six spot is not the worst, but you don't you play to win. You don't play to even mess around with that. You just take what you can, and you move on." But it is again. I'm not too I'm not too plus about uh the game yesterday. Against Denver Nuggets. But let's talk about Tom Thibodeau. Let's talk about Tom Thibodeau. Where the hell is my OBS? Uh, Olia Sucker will point that out. Hey, man. It is what it is. God, God, God bless everybody, man. Even the lames, bro. Jesus took care of the sick at the lames. Took care of everybody. You know what I'm saying, man? But salute to, salute to dude. You got moderators. What My moderators don't create my channel. Oh, don't do the... They just control what happens in the chat. That's how... That's how smart you are. Anyway, God bless you, bro. God bless you. Uh, let me move this up so y'all can see our comments. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, uh, why is it not showing up? Is that good? Uh, it's no real good place to put this with the underdog fantasy thing down below. Let me see. Nah. That's a weird spot. Uh, give me two seconds. I'm just trying to move this comment thing. It's going to block out some of this, but I want you all to see our comments. Let me see. So, Shaw France in the building. My God, I love that people that never show, but come to the Grand Police and try. I love it's, it's all good, man. I need Gmo back. He would have let. <laughs> it's all love, man. I actually got some sleep today, bro. I took today off. I finally got some sleep, so I'm in a good mood, man. I saw my I saw my favorite, my favorite rappers, man. Rock Marciano, man. Man, Rock Marcy, can I just say something real quick before I go to Tom Thibodeau, man? You, man, that was a great performance yesterday. You know what I'm saying, man? The God, man, people knew you. Every lyric, people were singing to your lyrics, man. Yo, that was that was beautiful to see, man. Rock Marciano deserves all the flowers he can get. But uh, let's get to it, man. Tom Thibodeau, article written by The Athletic. And, of course, I can't see my uh, my article pop up. Let me see if it works. Let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to get to this article in the athlete. Where is this damn article? Oh, that's why. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I got it. When you change... This is the annoying thing. When you change uh, your what's the name, when you change it to a different screen, it messes up. It acts weird. So give me a few seconds, y'all. All right, now it's showing up. As you can see, it's all over the place. I literally sized it, but I sized it on the other, on my other, uh, my other screen. So I apologize for this, guys. This was all done before the show started, bro. Please don't get mad at me. I have to resize certain things. Let's see if I can fix this. Give me two seconds. I'm almost done. Almost done. Who do y'all got today, man? Who do y'all got today? Who do y'all got in the tournament? Uh, sorry about that. So, all right, let me get to the article. I don't know about this ad. I don't. Oh, that's Google Pixel. Pixel. All right, I throw some perfume ad. But again, Tom Thibodeau coming up. Contract for five years. Next year will be his last year. He'll be up for an extension. I, they said he's getting paid seven million. I thought I saw some people say he's getting getting paid five per. So I just want to go through this, uh, the athletic article, the athletical, <laughs> the athletic article 
talking about this, talking about Don DiVincenzo, saying that that whole thing about him being the worst coach in the league is some absolute BS. He said, Jim, I ain't been here for a minute. I got a troll, Rock Marcy, that... Yo, of course, Ally Wise, man. Talk your ish, bro. You good, my guy. Talk your ish, man. I appreciate you being here, man. I appreciate anybody who's here rock with us right now, man. Again, people, because I don't typically do this, so I'm, like, I'm trying to do more and more of this. Uh, so I appreciate you guys, man. But just to read through the article. So, again, talking about blah, blah, blah. blah. They talked about that that poll that went out with Tom Thibodeau getting worst coach of the year, or sorry, getting coach that no one wants to play for, or least likely players were least likely want to play for. Uh, according to athletic articles, said you know, just reading the results, forty three point six percent for Tom Thibodeau, and then Houston Rockets coach Steve, Stephen Silas is distant second at fourteen point five percent. The funny thing is that this doesn't sh this the poll doesn't prove anything to me. In terms of people don't want to play for Tom Thibodeau. Because how the hell Steven Silas was the same guy who had KPJ and Christian Wood walk out on him. In what world have y'all ever seen anyone walk right on uh, walk and they did perform, by the way, Ally Rise, they, they performed uh 76 yesterday. When the hell did you ever see anybody walk out on Tom Thibodeau? Cat had his issues back in the day. Cal Corvid didn't like Tom Thibodeau. I've never seen these guys walk out on Tom Thibodeau. They did on Steven Silas last year. All right, but let's go down the article. Ridiculous. Uh, and the fact that Thibodeau's become a two-time winner of this unwelcome award, having taken a dishonor when the poll was last published in 2019, saying he saved his re reputation, old school leader. In his New Age Times was alive and well. And the funny thing is that when you look at a lot of the, the issues that come with basketball nowadays, lack of fundamentals, lack of discipline, people, I, I don't mind the NIL deals. I think these players should be getting paid. If other people make money, if you're like this, you should be getting paid as well, too. Um... But a lot of what goes into actual fundamentals basketball-wise has been lost through the AAU system, been lost with the monetization of, of childhood, of youth basketball, youth sports in general. And the things that are missing are the things that... Guys cannot screen in the NBA. Guys cannot make the proper... Think about this. Think about this. Guys are coming into the NBA as highly touted whatever, whatever you want to call them. They can't make a swing pass to save their life. They can't screen to save their life. They can't shoot a free throw to save their life. They don't understand. They can't see the help defender a mile away. You driving, you driving from the top of the key trying to take your man ISO. You driving off of a screen. The help defense is literally just running about. And you see guys go straight to the basket. Boom. Get blocked. Get hurt. I was watching a whole video on Thon Maker. Guy couldn't make a proper pass to his teammate to save his life. These are basketball fundamentals that these players are lacking that you're supposed to be getting in middle school. How, how to read a defense in middle school. What's the problem? Even though you, in the NBA is a little bit different. But positional on defense. Understand when to play over or under the screen. This guy can't shoot, play under the screen. He can shoot, how's over the screen? My help better try to hedge. Help me hedge. And then get back to your man once I get over the screen. This guy, yo, you have guys in the NBA, you're literally teaching them elementary basketball. So I would expect for them not to like a Tom Thibodeau who's a fundamental coach. And that's not me saying that Tom Thibodeau's not without floor, floor or without fault. He is. No coach is perfect. But a lot of these guys, they will, oh, I, we, we want a, I want a championship level coach. But those guys get fired. They, bro, they move on from these so-called championship level coaches. And a lot of those championship level coaches built themselves on the back of the fundamentals taught by the previous coach. <laughs> Most of these championship level coaches who weren't there from the building foundation, they built off the backs of the previous coach who did and had to get fired because he's not a so-called championship level coach. I don't mind it. I see these guys, these young players playing under Tom Thibodeau. Who, bro, Cam Reddish. And what is Cam Reddish doing now? Obi Top. What is Obi Toppin doing now? Frank Nilakina. Kevin Knox, Dennis Smith Jr. had to refine himself as a defender to stay in the league. And it wasn't even Tom Thibodeau who did anything. It was freaking Carlisle who ruined him. 
If you want to say play a rune. But we get to that a little bit later. Let me get to the rest of this damn article, man. I don't know why. I'm getting all worked up. Uh, but see, Knicks 41 28 and 48 29 now. Uh, compute that vintage Tom Thibodeau place down a 3 1 West Coast trip. Oh, it was 41 28. My bad, my bad. I thought it was, I don't know, I thought it was 41 29. Um, Marvel ability to retain Eastern Conference best Boston, blah, 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 despite a brutal run of injuries to, to pivotal players. Was realized that today's players are just flat out wrong about the often criticized CEO. Just ask Dante DiVincenzo. He said that poll for me, excuse my language, but it doesn't mean ish. DiVincenzo played for Golden State last season and signed a four year, $50 million deal with New York last summer to the Athletic at the Knicks win over the Warriors on Monday night. I've seen a poll, but I signed here. His ringing endorsement continued from there. I don't care about Thibodeau's uh, reputation. DiVincenzo con continued, I don't care. Guys in NBA now are different than before. Everybody wants the game all offense. Nobody wants to come in and practice. And here's the interesting thing. He's about to get to an interesting point. But me being my first year here, I think he's done a great job of balancing things from the outside world. There's always a different view. But in our house, in-house, we have a good dynamic. We enjoy it. Everybody enjoys being around each other. To the outside world, you really don't know. Real talk. All you know is perception. All you know is the history of other teams Thibodeau has coached and his years with different organizations. But we've had plenty of rest days, plenty of off days. And rumor has it, I share with DiVincenzo, that Thibodeau's practices aren't nearly as hard as advertised these days. They're not, quote unquote, Don DiVincenzo. I played the Warrior, I played for the Warriors, Steve Kerr. Uh, sorry, Warriors, Steve, Steve Kerr. And played for Coach Bud, former Bucks, uh, Mike Budenholzer. It's not like you come in here, all of a sudden you're, play, you're running track every day and practice. You can't really even practice like that anymore. Uh, I think what he does by far, uh, he does far better than anybody I've been around is he's the most prepared this is something that has been with him. He's been a, well, probably even before this, but remember, he's been a Nick, Nick assistant. This is something that Pat Riley taught. This is something that, uh, a preach, excuse me, this is something that um, uh, Van Gunny preached to be prepared. That if I see a player, this is Tom Thibodeau, this is what they've talked about before. And I believe it was also spoken about in this book as well, too Blood in the Garden. Please go get this book. This is an excellent book. I, I, I probably finished this book, I want to say, like collectively, not in three days straight, but it's probably. I probably finish it in a, in a span of three, four days. That's how good it was. I, I love like that, that history, man, going back. Chris Henry did a bang, bang job. Uh, but in that book, they talked about, uh, like I think it was either Pat Riley or, 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 or uh, Van Gunny. I want to say it's Pat Riley where you would see a player, because I've heard it also uh, 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 said by Tom Thibodeau, said about Tom Thibodeau that you see a player in a certain position on the floor, you'd be like, what percentage does he shoot from that from the corner? What percentage does he shoot from the wing? What percentage does he shoot off the dribble from that? So you just, and you, and this is back in the day. So you just, to have a, a semblance of understanding where guys' strengths are, to understand their tendencies, understand, okay, when he wants to get to a spot, bro, he wants to try, he wants to try to get off that screen to get to the right block, uh, to the right uh, uh, pinch. Nine times out of 10. That's why freaking your man, Michael Jordan, had to tell Jamal Mashburn, yo, you keep going to this side, and so you go. You like going to your right, blah, blah, Switch it up. Go to your left a little bit. And Mike, Mike Jordan, Michael Jordan was going around that All Star game, a one All Star game, and telling everybody about that game. So that and that's the type of you want those type of 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 heady wonkish. Salute to my brother, uh, 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 still Knicks fan man, Ron and John, man. Salute, bro. Please go check that. I believe they're gonna have a show tomorrow morning. So please go check them out. Doing wonderful, fabulous things. Those are my guys, man. Salute, 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 salute. He says, uh, yes, I, bro, bro, bro. He said, I missed you at the last NBK event. When, yo, bro. I'm yo, I had a wedding that Sunday. I would have been at the game and everything. I had a wedding. <laughs> My boy's wedding. I told Isaiah. I, I think Isaiah told him or whatever. I had a wedding. that I would have came, bro. I would have came. So I don't, I, Andy's out there trying to flex everything. Man, F Andy. So I don't like, I don't like, I don't like his, his fake deadlift shrimp uh, styles out there, bro. That thing got me so pissed. But salute to NBK. Salute to Ron and John. Still Knicks fan, bro. Uh, March. Has been March and February. This has been terrible. Everybody has planned their weddings. I got a baby shower to go to after uh, uh, tomorrow after the freaking game. Everybody's planning everything in March, bro. What is so great about March? What? Anyways, I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, yes, KPJ and Christian will go look it up. Walked out on uh, uh, Stephen uh, Stephen Silas last year. But let me get back to the article. Um, I'm uh, digressing a little, or digressing. Yeah, I am. I think that's digressing. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me. He says, I think what he does far better than anybody I've been around is he's the most prepared. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to go for two hours on your feet and running, but when you're in there, you're going to lock in, you're going to get the stuff done, and, get, and we're going to get out. That's also why they draft a lot of Villanova guys, a lot of UK guys, not a lot of, but UK and Villanova drafted or brought, brought over. Um, they, they want these guys who come from schools with strong pedigrees where you have to either understand and learn things on the fly, UK, and, and, and be a elite uh, at your position, or at least at what you do, right? That's typically what UK seem to be, right? Or you're coming from a, 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 a strong school where there's a, a strong teacher base, you understand the fundamentals, like the, the, the uh, Villanova Wildcats. Now, again, we haven't drafted, per se, from Villanova like that, but you're bringing over plays, let me say. Bringing over plays and building your team up on that, right? Versus I got to bring in some kid who was such and such in high school, and he he had one year in college, and he was drafted as this, he's supposed to be this. Uh, he comes in, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He can't shoot from outside. He can't can't he can't shoot from the corner three, which is the shortest three uh, 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 to the basket. He can't, every time he has a ball at the top of the key, he wants to dribble and beat his man off the dribble versus understanding, yo, I got Drew Holiday on me. Let me pass to the guy who has freaking blase blase or the freaking uh, a weaker defender on him. Right? It's a ha and people think that these coaches just come in here. You have this talented kid who, and you just come in. You have to, you have to refine their games to the point you're almost building up a player. Guy, I don't have the time to do that. I'm gonna help develop and develop you by putting you in certain spots and seeing how you execute, right? But I can't sit up here. I, I can't sit up here and baby you on things that you should have learned years ago. Things that you should be learning in in in, in freaking uh, uh uh in the summer. How many podcasts do you watch where they say, yo, these guys do not care about basketball. They don't give a F. They get their money and they're good. Well, let me get back to the article, man. In this player participation policy where the NBA has finally pushed back for the low management movement, where a public outcry for improved defensive play and increased physicality has come along. There's something fitting about Thibodeau team showing on this kind of way. They're tough with the next man up mentality has helped them survive. Serious setbacks for uh, Jules Randle. Blah, 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 they play hard on both ends of the floor with seven-ranked defense as flourish despite the aforementioned ab uh, absences, Robinson and the newbie. By the way, also, not just the defense, too. For how many years? I want to say for the past four years. I want to say, in, obviously, including the season. I want to say we've been, at, I think we've been at least top 11 in offensive rebounding for the past four years. Let me just, I don't want to get in trouble. Let me make sure, I'm pretty sure, because this year we are, we're second in offensive rebounding. I want to say the last few years has been the same in terms of putback points. Like, we have not missed a step. Yep, last year we were uh, third. The year before that, why did my mouse click on that damn link? Uh, now my computer's lost. Doesn't know where to go now. Oh, thank God. All right. Uh, the year before that, we were fourth. And then the Mitchell, uh, the Nobles of Well year, I'm pretty sure we were up there in offensive rebounding as well, too. My computer's wild slow, son. Golly. Yep. Oh, we were 16th that uh, Tom Thibodeau's first year. So, not 11. My bad. We were 16. So, only one year we weren't top five in offensive rebounding. Only one year. Right? So, add that to the defensive prowess of Tom Thibodeau. They're talking about in this article. Let me get back to the article. Uh, but if Thibodeau said, blah, blah, blah. blah. Let me skip through all this, all this uh, kerfuffle. Uh, number one, defense rate, blah, blah, blah. Yes, we know the OJ and newbie years are just beautiful. Uh, but I want to get back to, yeah. So it brings us back to Tom Thibodeau. This, we talked about his uh, him being re-signed for next year. It says, as the case with any coach whose contract uh, situation is in question, the outcome of the postseason will surely matter when it comes to what comes next. When it comes to what comes next, his current deal runs through 2024-25, but the league sources say he hopes to secure his future with the Knicks. When both sides plan to revisit the topic this summer at this rate, the Knicks might wind up hoping they decide to get something with Thibodeau before the recent explosion of coaches' salary. Now, not say I would play around with it. Pause. I don't think Tom Thibodeau's going anywhere. So, <laughs> this sounds terrible, but I don't think Tom Thibodeau's going anywhere. I think Tom Thibodeau, his dream... His, uh, uh, I don't know what the right word would be or right phrase, but his glory would come to fruition if the Knicks win a championship under his coaching. They said, which website shows individual matchup analysis? NBA.com. 
So if you want to see game by game, just go to the previous game. Wait like a day because if you do try to do the same day, they don't have the stats ready. But go day by day. Uh, go uh, sorry, go game by game and do it. Wait for the game to end, and then go to um. Where is it? When you go, don't go to box score, but go on NBA.com. NBA.com and go to, like, go to box score, but go to where it has a box score and everything, all the team stats and everything for that game, and then go to, give me two seconds. Where's my, I don't know why I can't find my, uh, yeah, my box score. So go to, uh, at the top, yeah, go to box score, my bad. Go to box score for the game, right? There's a, a section where you could click on traditional, advanced, miscellaneous, and go to matchups. And then you see all the matchup stats for whichever offensive play you want to choose and then whichever defensive play. You could do for offensive play versus everybody defensively. You could do vice versa. Um, and if you want to see the stats for each player, go to the, when you go to NBA.com, go to the individual player stats page where it has like his face and everything. And then there's a place where you can set the stats and then you go to matchups and you see the matchups against everybody that person has played. So, little, uh, little, uh, 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 help over there, man. Um, but yeah, let me get back to the article. Sorry, sorry. I just keep, I just had to answer that because I, I know somebody asked me that before on Twitter and I finally found it out. Yeah, you know, I like to, you know, spread the, the knowledge and the love. You know what I'm saying, man? Get look okay, man. Um, but anyway, get back to the article. His current deal runs to 2024. There, yeah, I read, read that. For those who might miss the economic boom on this front, take a look at the list of recent deals that have drastically changed the market. Monty Williams signed a six-year... Where's my calculator? Signed a six-year, $78.5 million deal. Which gets him to 13 per season. Monty Williams, who... I think he's a good coach. But I don't know if he truly fixed the issues he had in Phoenix. I think he was a little bit too inflexible. Is that the right word? With his squad, he had issues with DeAndre Ayton, who can be a head case at times. Uh, but he's also had issues this year with Jaden Ivey. Now, granted, Jaden Ivey is a young player, and it's like, ah, he should be falling in line. But he had issues with Jaden Ivey. Which led to some believing that he could have been traded off. Now, Jane Ivey was taken out the starting lineup, I believe, uh, at one point. And so he's had his issues, right? And that whole Detroit front office is an absolute cluster F. The owner, the coach, the GM, the owner, and the GM don't see eye to eye. The rumors that the own no, the owner won the draft Cade, the GM won the draft Jalen Green. It's all over the place with that that squad. Monty Williams coming in is not gonna come in and just fix everything. I don't think he's one of those. Those uh, transformational coaches who can like essentially clean up from the front office down, and when you have that all that noise, the front office, bro, you're not like what no what what is he gonna do? He's hamstrung. They're gonna put the plays in front of him. I mean, they're gonna say coach the guys you have in front of you and and shut the f up. Not in those words, but anyway, uh, uh, you got uh your man Greg Popovich who signed an extension, uh, five years, eighty million dollars for the San Antonio Spurs. Not much to say with that. I mean, it is. Popovich, he's a legend out there. I think, obviously, you know, with his, his his situation, he's like, look, I love basketball. I can't get away from the sport. This is what gives me happiness and what whatnot. The guys won so many championships and made the, the Spurs what they are today, obviously. So I get it. Eric Spolstra makes sense. Sign an eight-year, uh, 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 eight-year, $100 million deal. By the way, can I say something real quick, man? I do not like the Miami Heat. Whatsoever. I would never respect the Heat. I would never like the Heat in my life. But they did some G-ish. Yo, the Miami Heat did some G-ish for your man Eric Spolstra, bro. Excuse me. They, <laughs> the dude was going through a divorce and they basically said, let's wait till your divorce proceedings are over and then we'll give you the money so your wife don't get, your ex-wife don't get Nada. Outside of the realm of basketball, I yeah, I'm not a Miami Heat fan. They could they could eat one. I don't care about them, but golly, son, that is some G ish. That is that's some real love right there. So I just want to give my proper set of Miami Heat for that. Not for anything. I don't like the Miami Heat. F them. I don't give two Fs about them. But that is some G ish right there. Um, let me let me move on to the rest of the article. Doc Rivers signed in this one. 
Doc Rivers signed a deal with my Milwaukee in January. It runs through 2026, 2007 season, worth 40 million combined, which is ridiculous. Well, no, no. 24, 20, 24, 23, 23, 24, 24, 25, 25, 26, 26, 27. So that's around 10 million per. Per, I guess, I don't know. And then two year uh, extension with Steve Kerr uh, for, was that 17 and a half uh, each year for Golden State? Uh, so again, they said league sources say Thibodeau by comparison makes an salary in the neighborhood of 7 million. All signs point to well deserved uh, raise likely coming his way, and it makes perfect sense too. This roster was largely built by Leon. Rose led front office with Thibodeau's gritty mentality in mind, is full of players like DiVincenzo with thriving in a manic and professional environment. It makes much it, it in that sense it's much better fit for, than Tom Thibodeau's Minnesota mess that came before the uh before. The fact that Jimmy Butler was the only player who was cut from Thibodeau's cloth was problematic. It's real tall. Uh franchise centerpiece Jalen Brunson known to be one of his biggest backers, as as is his father, Nick's assistant coach. With Brunson Randall is his kind of player, a bruiser who's surely trying to rush way back, rush his way back now. Uh, ditto for uh, an Anubi. I'm sorry for this reading. This is terrible. This is hooked on Phoenix read right here. Who fought through obvious pain in his recovering elbow before the decision was made to give him more time to heal. And just to get back to, just want to play a clip from Jalen Brunson. He was on the All, All the Smoke podcast with uh, uh, Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson. Talk about Tom Thibodeau. I don't know if you guys heard it, but I'm listening to quick. What's the experience been like with Tibbs? Old school, tough nose. <sighs> Tibbs. I'll say me and Tibbs' his relationship is different because. Here's the backstory. My dad went to Salem High School in Salem, Massachusetts. Tibbs went to Salem State. So that's how they met when my dad was in high school. So that relationship started there. And so they had played pickup and all that stuff. They knew each other from just being in the area. So that relationship started there. And then my dad that's crazy. was with the Knicks when Tibbs was the assistant coach when they went to the finals. Mm -hmm. And so obviously the relationships continued to grow and never. And then my dad also coached with Tibbs and the Bulls. So that's why I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then he was with the Timberwolves with Tibbs. So I've known Tibbs pretty much since life. I can, yeah, mm -hmm. my whole life. So when I got to here, this dude pushes me the same way I saw him push any other player. Um, doesn't really give me special treatment. Like he'll still, like he'll yell at me. Like he'll yell at me like, I can have a wide open shot in the corner. He's going to yell at me for something. So like, it ain't, it ain't like, there's no like peripheral or, special treatment at all he just he pushes me every single day he wants me the best player I can be every single day mm -hmm. and i like people say that he does he it he it. lives it this man was in the gym is in the facility yesterday after our last game now uh, giving me a call at 10 a.m like <laughs> just like talking about basketball what i thought about the game last night i was like coach i haven't watched it like, I'm, I'm getting i'm packing i'm going to all-star he's all right well, this is what i think yada, boom, boom, boom. he's always pushing me that way so I mean, our relationship is different just because I've known him for so long. But, I mean, I love that man. What was your Team USA experience like? And losing at the same time. So I'll say this. My Team USA experience. So, that was his points on Tom Thibodeau, man. We've heard this before about Tom Thibodeau. The, the, the type of player that, you want, that plays on the Tom Thibodeau, bro, this is literally the fabric of New York. Hard no, smart. Heady plays hard, works hard. Like, the, the flight that Tom Thibodeau gets, like, you can't sit up there and complain about Tom Thibodeau, but then complain about the type of player that we're all scared will dominate the NBA or is dominating, or I don't say dominating, but is taking over the NBA in terms of volume, the type of players that are coming through. And these are soft players, bro. These are young, not saying anything bad against young players, but these young, impressionable guys who are coming through, but they're not ready for pressure. They think things should be handed out to them. They've gotten free things their whole lives. They don't even go through adversity anymore. They play one year in college. They're not even sitting up here saying, let me build a team to try to take down Duke. Let me build up a team to try to take down freaking University of Kentucky. Let me try to take down uh, 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 Villanova, UConn. They're not, th they're like, yo, I'm good. Give me my NIL money. I'm good for one year. I don't care about how any of this goes afterwards. I'm, I'm getting to the lead. Now, I'm not hating on that. But that profile of player comes in and they make the NBA product bad. Now they got to go overseas. Now they got to go from this team to that team to this team. They don't even stay with the original teams that they were on, bro. Because they're not ready. They're spending the, co the, the developmental college years 
and even less development once it gets to the NBA. So when I sit up here and I ask people, like, what is the idea about Tom Thibodeau? His defense antiquated. Okay, but how many teams in the NBA run, protect the paint, split out, uh, rush out, close out on the, uh, on the outside afterwards? So many teams run a defensive philosophy. Help a help defender. One pass away defense. So many teams, uh, NBA teams run the same philosophy. The Bucs were running that, bro. Like, oh, yo, son. It's ridiculous. Oh, his, the, his offense is antiquated. Well, that's cool. I could bring every genius offensive game plan here. If guys can't run it, I, 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 we lose. We look even worse. When Fizzo was here, the Knicks were trying to run the Spain pick and roll his first year here. He had to stop it because guys were too dumb. We had young players who were dumb. Frank Lillikino did not commit himself to basketball. That's why I got hurt all the time. The stupid groin injuries. Your man, uh, 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 Kevin Knox. I think he meant well, but he wasn't ready. Dogs, what are we talking about here? There's a reason why Josh Hart and your man Kyle Lowry got on and said, yo, look, yo, Kyle Lowry's like, I've run through a wall for tips. And Josh Hart was echoing the sentiment. Yo, but and look what Josh, Josh Hart is doing now. He's basically your baby Dennis Rodman. Your poor man's Dennis Rodman with a better offensive uh, 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 game plan with, uh, in, in his uh, skill set. Not game plan, excuse me. Better offensive, uh, offensive skill set than him. Like, bro, like, I, I, look, I, I want people, if you want to get mad at Tibbs, get mad at Tibbs, but get mad at him for the right reasons, bro. New York, it's, it's funny because everybody wants to praise the 90 teams back in the day, but literally the 90 teams are literally, it's the same philosophy. Fundamental basketball, and you live your offense through your best players. You try to get other guys involved. You play, you play your offense up to the best players who are on the court. So if Randall's there, even though I don't necessarily like it per se, it's post some Randall, he plays a century, gets guys open. Right, if Randall's not there, nice in the passing kind of I want to say explode, but improve a lot more. Right, ball movement, blah blah. So you play up to the skill set of your best players on the floor at every any given moment. That's what Tom Thibodeau's trying to do. Like I just I don't know, I just don't get all the hate Tom Thibodeau gets, bro. Like when you see that, it's like it's just people just want to hate to hate. It's just, you gotta hate something because the Knicks suck, and it's like you don't want to hate the players because when you got you guys want to still get autographs and uh, be on their schmeeds if you see them in public, for the most part, but. Tippett doesn't get, shouldn't get nearly half the blame he gets uh, for, I would say, a lot of his career. Let me see. Uh, I already read that. Uh, Tippett's focus on these Knicks is fighting through all the adversity and raising as much hope as it. And by the way, too, how many coaches out there, let me just ask this, how many coaches out there have their teams in the thick of things in, East, in their conferences and you lost... Three, sometimes even four of your top players throughout the season for large swaths of time. For large swaths of time. I'm not talking about for a game here and there. I'm not talking about even for five years. I'm talking about they're out for this for most of the season. Sorry, there's something in my eye right now. How many coaches could coach up past that? Remember the Warriors lost, was, they lost everybody? And they they were out there. And Curry was still was still there, right? I don't hear anybody saying, yo, Steve Curry, man, you should have had them still in the playoffs because you still got that game, right? <laughs> and Steph Curry is better than everybody on our team. I, I'm not trying to make a direct comparison like that, but it's like, y'all are not objective when it comes to Tom Thibodeau, hating on Tom Thibodeau. And it's fine. It is what it is. I'm not going to sit up here and try to convince people. I'm just trying to use stats and obje objectivity. To just you know teach the you know teach the truth to the young black youth you know what I'm saying man but anyway um they said it's a t uh, said in here in uh in in the here and now though we read that blah blah, blah. and the coach so many players at least like to play for it seems has total buy in from the ones who couldn't be happier that he's their coach it's a team and that's what we prioritize Tibbo explained before the Warriors game that's why we want guys sacrifice to put the team first but there has to be that belief and I think. When your best players have that belief, your entire team ends up having that belief. We know we have a great group that we work with. They're great to be around every day. They give you everything they have. So we know we're fortunate, but we know we still have a lot of work to do. And I think confidence comes from the demonstrated ability. Like the fact that we've won with players being out means there's a belief that we can do it. it also means that your depth, that means that's good coaching. When you have guys who are second, third rotational guys, guys who are at the end of your bench who come in. Now, so we're not playing Charlie Brown and, and Daquan Jeffries like that, but guys like McBride, who I'm going to get to in a little bit. Bro, you're talking about these guys who could step in for games, for game, not just one game here, for games, and do what they're doing? Come on, son. Come on, bro. Damn.
Come on, man. Like, you playing against you playing small against team. That's something that we've cried about for years. More assists, more passing, but also being able to play small. And the fact that we able to do it against the Warriors, bro. I know the Warriors at the time were 35 and 31. I, I get it. But it's still the Warriors. The fact that the Knicks were able to do what they did, come on, man. Like, where's the credit for Tom Thibodeau? This makes absolutely no sense. I just want to go through a few more points before we head out of here. Uh, let me get this down. And then let me... Do I have two windows of this? That's no, just a thumbnail. Hold on, hold on. So I'm just trying to... All right. So you had a few things just want to talk about here. Tom Thibodeau, his impact here in New York since he's been here. Uh, why is it not going down? Uh, sorry for the layout. It's a little, little janky. But again, Tom Thibodeau's impact in New York, uh, counting yesterday's loss. Tom Thibodeau's 166 and 139. Fifth place in Knicks history behind uh, uh, Holzman. Uh, you got Pat Riley. Uh, not Van Gunn. You have another coach who coached in the 50s. I'm forgetting the name. I apologize. Uh, and then... Uh, Joe Lapchick, my bad. Jeff Van Gunny, Pat Riley, uh, and Red Holtzman. Uh, then you have uh, uh, Tom Thibodeau in fifth. Uh, damn, Mike D'Antoni? 121, once he said, golly, that's terrible. Um, but again, fifth place in, in Knicks history in only four, well, in four seasons. Excuse me, let me say it. Uh, and, and, and in four seasons, because Pat Riley... No, Jeff Gunny, I'm sorry, he's still ahead, 248, my bad. Uh, Thibodeau, four years. Hubie Brown was here with five. Mike Tantoni was four. Mike Winston was here for three. Um, so, again, impressive feed by Tom Thibodeau, especially, especially given the context, right? First year he gets here, bro, we had Randall. We had we, we were a team that literally just had 30 billion power forwards. We had Randall. We had Reggie Bullock. Uh, we had uh, R.J. Barrett, still a young R.J., second-year R.J. Barrett. Um, who put up his best three-point shooting years that year too, man. I missed that. I missed those years, bro. But with so many parts, Alfred Payton, first to even get to the playoffs in the fourth seed, come on, bro. The defense we had, elite defense, terrible offense. But, you know, we get able to get Randall's. Uh, they said, Gmo, how much West Side Gun paid you for your God is love versus your chill, man. Drip more Makus, my guy. Salute, 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 salute. So there's a lot of context behind these four years, bro. That people don't even take into con into into consideration. Excuse me. Yeah, the second year we flop. Oh, we should have played IQ. I I agree. We should have played IQ. But what, what was that going to change? <laughs> His development probably would have helped him out a little bit more. But we're going to win that season. For some people, think oh, if you played IQ. Some people, some things be y'all not y'all, but some fans be saying, bro, golly, y'all be y'all be smoking on that Molly Ringwald, man. Uh, top five in the Eastern Conference two out of three seasons. First season here, I believe it was fourth. Uh, year before, uh, year after that, we kind of ate straight uh, krill. Uh, with uh, freaking Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker. The second year, last year, we were fifth in, it, in the Eastern Conference, and now this year we're fifth again. Um, so, again, Tom Thibodeau, what he's been able to do in this in a tough Eastern Conference. Say what you want. It's a tough. I know we beat the Cavaliers last year, but still got the Heat who find a way to beat. Still got the almighty Celtics. Uh, pff, well, I don't know if they're going to win a chip, even despite the fact that the fact they got all these freaking players on the squad. Uh, they get in the playoffs and they just forget how to play basketball. Um, but Or deep in the playoffs, let me say, and forget how to play basketball. Uh, Celtics, uh, obviously the Bucks with Giannis. I mean, we this is not sweet. Now we have developing teams like the Magic. You got the Pacers going to be a nuisance. Right by, I think, what, they right in the seventh spot? Six, no, sixth spot. They're in the sixth spot, I believe, Pacers. So for, for Thomas to be able to do this, and we don't even have the, we don't even have our full squad, bro. Again, ooh. Major important players missing, and we not even do this with a bro. Top ranked offense, thirteenth in the league. Now, great. A lot of it's from the offensive rebounding. The points per game has never. I don't think we ever had a top points per game offense, and we've still been able to win without it. Right, OG and Newbie's here. We have what two losses with him? 13, 14, and two, or 14, 15 and two. OG and Newbie having several guys tops in a plus minus, a, a top ranked defense, as well as being one of the top teams in uh, three point shooting and. Three point three point is made and attempted, bro. Like Tom Thibodeau has been. Eight, people say he can't adjust, he can't adjust, but why is it that we have several iterations of this team that have mostly been successful? 
You can't do that without adjusting. Pressure Chua. Bro, that was a throw-in. That was make weight. That was your right, yo, you going out, yo, yo, go me get me um yo, get me a a a a bacon egg and cheese on a roll and then um yo give me a give me like uh uh give me one of those um give me a chiclet, give me a pack of chiclet gums. Or give me give me a box of lemon heads. Precious are true was a lemon heads, bro. And I'm lemon heads right now, they they carrying us collectively well. They last a lot longer than the freaking bacon, egg, and cheese we just ate, bro. Put some respect on Tom Thibodeau's name, and he can get the best out of his bigs. Isaiah Hardenstein's never looked good. Pressure Chu, another bigs, never looked good as he does now. Mitchell Robinson was putting up 10 rebounds a game. He was all, he should he should have been all NBA defense if he was if he was healthy playing throughout the season. Thompson in overall re rebounds. Thompson offensive rebounds. Thompson contested offensive rebounds. Like what are we talking about here, man? He made he got knows so well paid. Now granted by us. But he got knows so well paid. Knows so well was not trying to sue us. He was trying to sue his agent. <laughs> Rich Paul. Put some respect on Tom Thibodeau's name. 13 in offense. Like I've said, we've never been below, outside of the first season here, Tom Thibodeau's here. We've never been below top five in offensive rebound. You know how tough that is? But y'all want to sit up here and say that, oh, that's antiquated offense. Really? If you don't have a team who can shoot well, I need to get the ball back. <laughs> oh, he has the slowest pace offense in the league. Who gives a F? Pace does not dictate success. If I use pace correct, uh, correctly, like we did in certain games, like we did it in the, Dem the first Devin Nuggets game, we did it against the 76ers in that first game, beating by 30, run their legs ragged, right? Use pace strategically. It works. Like, I just don't get this. Playoffs are two or three years. Team construction philosophy. We actually have a framework with how we want to build teams. He said, yo, Gmo, you called Captain Matumbo. Uh, uh, Captain Matumbo said, damn, Gmo, you called Precious Salt and Pepper. Hey, yo, hey. You're, he's not even Salt and Pepper. Salt and Pepper is too... He, he, was, he was considered... Uh, <laughs> Precious was considered freaking uh, Paprika. He was Obey. I'll give him Obey. I can't... Paprika is too disrespectful. I'll give him Obey. And some people like me, I'm allergic to Obey. I, Throw itching. Put some respect on Thibodeau's name. The team construction philosophy. We all know what we want to build, right? You want multifaceted guards who could shoot, who could, uh, who could dribble, who could shoot off, shoot off the dribble, who could operate the pick and roll, who could kick the ball out to the open guy. Whether it's on the outside, was a roller to the basket, make the right and smart pass. He wants guards and wings who could shoot threes. Now we're one of the top three-point shooting teams in the league. It was the last time you showed me when, when we had during them Fisdale days. Shoot, even during the Derek Fisher days. Hornacek days. And Hornacek came in here having at one point having the top offensive efficiencies with the Suns that year. Remember he had a, a, a Drogic. He had a, Isaiah Thomas who's back in the league, by the way. Which is crazy. Uh, Isaiah Thomas and uh, Eric Bledsoe. He couldn't do nothing for the Knicks offensively. He couldn't do Jack Ish. And now we have a team who can shoot threes. Kind of falter a little bit, but still. 14th and three point three point is made, 12th and attempt is 17 efficiency. At one point we were ninth nine and we were like ninth and eighth in in, in efficiency. Uh, and three point is made and attempted. Team construction. I want big men who can rebound. I want big men who are mobile, who can switch at times if need be, who can hedge off the screens, who rebound. Then I want to experiment with, with some of my fours, some of my, my big men, right? Isaiah Arnstein, Ram, not experiment, but I want guys a little more multi fast on offense. I'm trying to get the Jakim Noah. Uh, I, want, I want some Jakim Noah for, for some of my bigs, right? 
I want guys to defend, who close out, hit the corner three, like I said, the easiest three on the court. And people are like, oh, Tom Thibodeau. You have to build info. How can you get to calculus without going through freaking algebra? <laughs> How can I go through? I can't. <laughs> I can't get to freaking physics without doing basic math. Because people will say, oh, look at the kings. Look at the warriors. The they look at, yeah, look at them. They, we don't have that. And the Kings, y'all won't even talk about the Kings like that a few years ago, even when my son Sabonis got there. Y'all weren't talking about the Kings like that. It wasn't until they got the three-point shooters that complements their offense and what they're trying to do. Split action, pinch post with your man uh, uh, um, Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. Spain pick and roll. They run all these because they have the pieces. Knicks right now, the pieces that they do have aren't even healthy. And when they are healthy, you got guys who can't even make the fundamental plays. Your man Mitchell Robinson, God bless him, still can't make a screen to save his effing life. <laughs> I've seen when they were playing Taj at times, I understood why Tibbs did. I'm not saying say I necessarily not I'm not saying I necessarily agree. But Taj at one point was the only solid screener on this Knicks squad. If I run the Spain pick and roll to get my shooter open. My big baby able to scream properly. To even give the impression that they're really trying to run the ball through the, the roller. Leaves my three-pointer guy open. Oh, I, just, I just don't get it, man. And then developing the kids. I'm Again, I'm not saying that Tibbs is there seeing the gym these guys developing the games, man, but... We, talk, we, we, we like to give credit to other coaches, other teams out there where guys develop. Whether it's the coaches', the, uh, coaches impact, their impact, their own agency, their own volition in terms of improving their game. I mean, Miles McBride is showing you differently. IQ shows you differently. Even RJ at times shows you differently. At Tom Thibodeau don't hate no damn kids. They talked about last year. Fred Cass talked about an athletic, the early, uh, early group. Guys are going out there working with Tom Thibodeau, uh, work with Tom Thibodeau in the second practice, right? Putting the time and effort to understand the defense, going walk through his play, bro. That's not development in some in some shape or form. But y'all want to give uh, uh, your man uh, uh, Ime Doka all the credit, all the credit for development, and yet your man Jalen Green was still doing boneheaded ish. I ain't talking about. Uh, getting girls pregnant. He's still doing the same boneheaded issues doing last year and the year before that. I don't see people killing uh, 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 your man Udoka. Now, granted, the Rockets are a lot better team than they were last year. But I don't see them killing Udoka. Mr. Disciplinarian. Mr. I mean, he's, not, he's not a crazy disciplinarian. He's just, he's just a straight shooter. I don't see them killing him like that, bro. And Jalen Green's still going out there inconsistent as ever. Very streaky, doing a lot of dumb boneheaded ish, bro. And people don't get him like they get on Tom Thibodeau. You don't see a lot of these guys doing boneheaded ish. I know Dante could overshoot at times, but again, with so many guys out, you kind of want them to shoot. Okay, I don't mind if you're shooting 33% from three because I need you to, to make seven threes. That's how bad we are today. I need you to make five threes, six threes. That's how uh, uh, weak we are in terms of our roster and guys being healthy. Miles McBride couldn't shoot worth a lick. And I know what he did in college. I know he averaged 38 or whatever his percent from three over two attempts. But he was not a knockdown shooter like that. Like he has been for a lot of this season. He wasn't. I watched those games. I watched uh, my son, uh, Deuce McBride, versus Davion Mitchell. Versus uh, Kate Cunningham twice. I watched those games, bro. He was never looked at as to be that important on offense. He's taking the Jimmy Butler route almost. And he's not, he's not a pl crazy playmaker like that. But McBride was not, yo, bro, come on, son. Now that he's doing what, I shoot better than 40% from three after shooting, what, 29% last year. Now it's, oh, he just needs the touches. He needs the, no, bro, I get, yes, he needs that too. But it's not about just touches. It's also about putting in a proper position to excel, to hit those shots, right? So I just give McBride the ball to go, yo, McBride, I need you to cross over this guy and get past him and then shoot the ball. The, that's not his game. He would have gotten exposed, battling. A lot of coaches do that. Yeah, especially for like high draft picks that they have no real plan for. Oh yeah, just give him the ball. I know McBride's a second rounder, but yeah, give his guy the ball. Let's see what he does. Let's let's hope for the better. Let's hope he's uh, Luka Doncic. Come on, bro. Give him credit for developing the kids and the kids who ain't here. Where, what they doing out elsewhere? 
Cam Reddish, and I'm not one of these people that ever say Cam Reddish would never make an NBA. I think it's a disgusting thing to say. But Cam Reddish is going to have a hard time in the NBA unless he becomes a viable catch-and-shoot shooter. Simple as that. Or he's going to go around team to team and team to team looking for a spot to defend. and Bro, all that stuff they talk about in high school, no one cares. <laughs> some of these guys have been some of the greatest high school players you've ever seen in your life. Some of the greatest mixtapes. No one cares. If you're not doing the NBA, say that for the retirement party when you go back home and you chill with your family and they're doing a celebration, birthday, that's great. Yeah, this is what he did in high school. NBA, NBA no, one, no one cares. No one. No one, no one gives a flying F. Obi Toppin couldn't rebound. It's funny. We, we play better small ball. <laughs> Away from Obi Toppin, bro. Obi Toppin is supposed to be the key. The guy's gonna play alongside Jules Red, but he can't. He can't rebound. He can't defend. Play playing small ball. In, it, it it entails the ability for your for, force to be uh, for your big man to be dynamic and multifaceted in the approach. They said bring people. There's nobody in the stream yard. No one's here. This is me talking. For all the people, this dude Captain Tumble's a clown. For all the people uh, who love the watch loans, they ain't here tonight, bro. He says Bible study vibes, don't mind at all. It's Bible study. Yo, wow. Wow, son. He says Bible study vibes, bro. Now I got to build it back up, bro. He said, Gmo, good job on next morning, bro. I appreciate you, Keanu, uh, Keanu Bryan. Salute, salute, salute. I'm about to close it up, but yeah, man. I just, I just get a little bit mad about some things people say about Tom Thibodeau, but he will get paid, man. He will get paid. There is a certain type of play they want to bring in a profile that Tom Tibble was established, which is beautiful to see. It's almost like college recruiting, right? We UK and those other teams, Villanova, they have the type of play they want to bring in. But it's beautiful to see that Tom Tibble is finally getting his propers, man. He said, just never wear the mask. Nick G, if Nick G wants to come up here, I'll let Nick G come through in the building. But now nah, I was just talking about the article, man. I just look, and these are the type of shows we want to do, man. I know, what is this seven? So that's about an hour. About an hour video, bro. We just talking about an article. That's about it. I do have some film view stuff I want to do. I want to go back to the damn Cleveland game. I'm, I'm probably just put a small little video on that. But yeah, man, Tom Tibble's going to get paid, bro. All these these misconceptions, all these notions about Tom Tibble being a bad coach, it, it stop. Stop it. It ain't, it, ain't, it ain't working no more. Tom Tibble was one of the best coaches in the league. The Knicks are one of the best teams in the league, given the circumstances and the context behind it. And he's going to get paid. And... Look, I don't know if he's a championship level, if he's a championship coach yet. There's going to be some, some I don't want to say term, there's going to be some noise, 2025-26. Because, yeah, we still, still got to get that so-called star to come over. But he's going he's gonna to have to coach through some uh, some turmoil. Not turmoil, through some some noise. Brunson's going to get paid, I think. Do we bring in Donovan Mitchell? Now, trying to bring out the defense between Donovan Mitchell and the Jalen Brunson court backcourt is going to be, it might be comical. Uh, Juice Randall, 25, 26. Is he going to be the same player? Are they going to, is he going to pick up the option? Is he going to look for money elsewhere? And the Knicks, the Knicks are like, yo, man, thank you for your services, but we ain't paying you that money. <laughs> we ain't paying you that money, right? We, we good. That would be one of the biggest slaps in the face, but tis is the business. And this is why I brought up, and I brought this up, I brought this up on my chin, I brought this up on Knicks Morning Brew. Do the new, does, if you're Julius Randle, do you sit up there and Knicks have a chance to get to the ECF, Right? Do the Knicks sit up? Uh, sorry, the Knicks. Do, does does Julius Randle risk it this season? Come back. Uh, Suits my brother Hector pointed out. It takes five to six weeks for it for your 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 uh your shoulder to heal after surgery, which if he gets in the summer would take him through to December January. So you're missing a good uh, 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 some chunk of that early uh, uh, NBA season start. If he tries to come back in now, has and it's, it's late. He should have he should have been at the surgery, and I said he should have the surgery. So, bro, Tibbs gonna have a lot, bro. And if they, if Randall doesn't get that contract, man, it's wild, man, because it makes sense. It's like, bro, we gotta move to the champion, the true championship level stage, bro. But uh, suit to Tamika Lou. Oh, that's my that's my gunner right there, man. It's Tamika Lou, man, I miss Tamika Lou in the building. Says Lou Gmo, long time, my my boy. Salutations, yo, yo. Bless up, bless up, man. God bless you, man. I love Tamika Lou, man. That's one of my one of my original gunners, man. Randall has to take the chance this season because we need to go all the way. Well, it's not about us; it's about him. He got to make his money, bro. Because if he sits out this season, they get to the ECF, they get to the championship without him. They gonna start looking at it like, and imagine this: say OG comes back, plays in the playoffs, and kills it. Now you're paying him money. 
They have to pay Jalen Brunson money once he comes through in 2025, 26. Now, Rand's going to try to come back in and say, hey, I'm still here. I'm still there. Yeah. Right? And they might be like, well, yeah, Randall, that was great. Uh, that's cool. But we're going to run the offense through these guys who just made it to the ECF. You could cause some derision in the locker room, bro. You could cause some issues in the locker room, bro, because he wants to get paid. He don't want just $29 million. He wants more than that. This is going to be his last, probably his last big payday. He's getting up there in age. So, hey, I'm just saying, bro, Ray, yo, Tim's going to have a lot. He says, stop clapping on the mic. Bad for, oh, I apologize, man. Shut your ass up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> shut your ass up, Nick. But suit to Nick G, hating ass. Um, let me say, Randall want that New York shit bad. He could taste it. But, yeah, do you sit up there and, and, and pressure him to to, 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 to to possibly hurt himself again? Be even worse to show them? I wish Nick was a was a, a, a specialist in that because I would love to pick Nick's brain on that because I don't know how it is. Like, if you if you dislocate the shoulder and then somebody comes down the short again, which I know, Bam, Bo Wagner, Miles Turner, if you, if you somehow see the Pacers, I know he seems going to be dirty doing that. Giannis. I know they're all going to do that. So how's my guy uh, with the soap? Forgot <laughs> Hinton Murphy, man. I don't know where Hinton is right now, but salute to Hinton. And yes, he does have the soap. So if you do see him, he's out in Harlem. Please, please go hit him up on the soaps, man. Very talented dude. Uh, very skilled dude, man. His um his best soaps to me was a blue one. And then he had this um not an oatmeal scrub. He had a damn I'm forgetting what the scrub was, but his blue one actually became my favorite. But salute to Hinton, man. Um but yeah, that's about it, man. I don't waste your time anymore, man. It's about an hour in. We do have the Nets tomorrow. That should be a win. The Nets suck. You gentrifying bum asses. No one likes you. You're not all beloved in Brooklyn. Spike Lee, near his so-called spike joint, whatever, still has a whole mur mural, mur mur mural of the Knicks. No one gives an F about no damn Brooklyn Nets. So the Knicks got to handle their business. And Macau. Take one for us, the true team you want to come to. We're going to try to find a way to bring you on here. Don't worry about it. Just just, just hold on, son. Because Sean Marks is doing such a terrible job. The uh, the um, the Koch family just bought a 10%, I believe, interest in the team. They could be pushing to get some changes in the front office. And that could mean Macau Bridges is gone. Because you didn't want to trade Dorian Finney-Smith for two first. You didn't want to trade Macau Bridges for first to try to build this team up and re or reshape this team. You got $30 billion power for uh, uh Forwards on that team. What, what, what are y'all doing? Brooklyn, you've been nothing. You've been nothing. Your greatest glory was, was KD stepping on the line and messing up a three that could have taken you guys through. You're nothing. You'll never be nothing. Sorry, you'll never be anything. <laughs> you'll never be nothing. But uh, guys, I appreciate you, man. As I said, man, suit by in the chat. My guy, Rock Marciano. Coming through Yo, yesterday. Um, it's the only reason why I missed the game yesterday, man. For the guy, man. You see the guy in his, in his Chanel? Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. He had the outfit, the, 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 three, the three wise men woman. They, they, they ran upon Jesus. You know what I'm saying, man? Hey. Let me chill, let me chill, man. I appreciate you guys. I'm about to be out. We have the game tomorrow at 1, which I'll be covering. I can't do a crazy long pause. A crazy, I can't do a, a long after uh, game analysis or post game analysis because I have a baby shower to go to. Yo, bro, y'all yeah, just, just do this. March is the worst month, but please stay tuned for more and more content. I'm going to be working on more and more content and release it as I get out. Again, be five, six, seven minute videos, even just that. So please, guys, look out for it. I appreciate you guys, man. Hit the likes on the videos. Hit and leave comments. I also did a video a few days ago with Mitchell Robinson, possibly coming back end of April. Oh, sorry, end of March. Uh, and I want to do some film, film, that, 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 film review stuff. So please go check it out. I appreciate you guys, man. Peace, Lou. God bless. I'm going to leave you with this beautiful rendition of my intro song, Rob Marciano. Hit that rock. Yo, I'm like, 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 I'm like,